about a number, that's with any type of traffic. Welcome to another presentation of graduation parties, math tutorials. Uh, I'm Professor Grady, and we're going to go over inequality today. Um, by the time we get to this, you actually should have covered, you really should just know, you know, I guess basically positive and negative numbers is what's most important. Um, we're not going to do too much manipulating of uh, inequalities, we're just going to go over the basic description of what it is. And this is a concept that shows itself not only when we go further into math, into arithmetic, like when dealing with uh, division or we're trying to determine, um, we're trying to understand something about fractions, but it also goes past arithmetic. This is actually the basis of logic. Um, and logic comes to when you're dealing with uh, conversation or explanation and there's no numerical right answer, but there is a right answer, and, that, and that's what logic allows you to come to, um, a right answer when there are no numbers involved. Also, this is the basic principles of computer programming. Most likely, the main reason you're able to view me right now is a result of some, some sort of computer programming or coding that is going on. Well, inequalities actually are the basis of, of logic and logic being the basis of computer programming. Uh, you will see inequalities pop up in computer programming all the time. It's second nature. So this may be new to you, but at the end of this video, uh, no matter what age you are, whether you know, you're as young as, as uh, you know, my kids and nieces and nephews, or you're as old as you know, my uh, parents and elders, you can, you should be able to understand this concept. Now, what is an inequality? Well, if I say something like, if I show something like this, number seven is less than the number nine. This is considered an inequality. The inequality symbol here being used is less than, right? And that's just giving a, a basic example of what we got going on. But what we, in general, inequalities, inequalities we deal with that greater than less than equal to You have greater than or equal to Then we have less than or equal to And the corresponding symbols are greater than less than, equal to, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. All right, that's it. <laughs> but let's go into it a little more so uh, the youngest of the uh, young minds can actually comprehend this. What number is greater than what number? We'll say that a number like five is greater than the number one. Less than, we could say the number one is less than the number five. Or we could say the number two is less than the number three. Equal to, well, we're familiar with this symbol uh, since we've gone over addition and subtraction, we can say that the number six is equal to three plus three, or the number six is equal to six. Greater than or equal to. What does that mean? Well, we, we're, we're thinking of both that 
you can have a number that satisfies this that, that satisfies this equality and proves it to be true. Um, if I were to say six is greater than or equal to six, this is still a true statement because while six is not greater than six, it's also equal to six. It, it is equal to six. So it can be either or, either it's greater than or it's equal to six. Well, it's equal to six, so you could say that six is greater than or equal to six. Um, you could say the same thing as six being less than or equal to six. Um, it's a choice, you're essentially choosing in this statement between less than or equal to but as long as it's either one of these, then you can use this. Now, why is that essential? Well, because when you're dealing with um, algebra, when you're dealing with equations, uh, as you go on to, to discuss uh, things about logic and computer programming, you will find these symbols to become very useful in describing what you're trying to describe. It essentially sets a limit. Just a slight example, if I were to say um, if I wanna uh, if I'm dealing with a number line and you know I'm saying that this is one, I wanna describe all of the numbers that are going that are going here after two I might say oh well he wants all uh, or after three rather I, I might say oh well I want all of the numbers that are greater than or equal to three that lets me know I want all of these numbers including three to be included in my equation x or whatever you know just a slight example and you can apply the same thing here um, or if I wanted to say you know all of these negative numbers and I say I, I want I want my y to be less than or equal to negative 2 I want all the numbers, including negative 2, I want all the numbers on the left side. So I'll say y, equals, y is less than or equal to negative 2. So I want my y to be any of these, all of these numbers. So just a slight example, it's a little, that's a little more advanced and past where we uh, reach so far in arithmetic. But I only stress that to show you that these become useful, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Now notice you can't have a greater something being greater than and equal to because when you use the word and they both both statements will have to be true at the same time and that's impossible. In this in this case, it's impossible for that to be the case. So you're only going to hear about or greater than or equal to less than or equal to. Um, but. If you can understand the most basic concepts of greater than, less than, or equal to, you know, inequalities is pretty much, uh, it's, it's pretty much, it's, it's, it's simple. So I'll get into it a little more. Some of you may already understand the full concept, but for those who don't, I, you know, Professor Grady loves going to the number line. The basis of all mathematics, the basis of all dimension, like how you're seeing me, you might not see the number lines yet, but once I'm, when, when you're done learning mathematics through the graduation party, you will see number lines everywhere, you know, but everything will appear to be a, sim, a, a simulation of sorts, some computer program of sorts, but I digress. So we got our basic number line. <laughs> Anytime you have numbers going in the positive direction, that means those numbers are getting greater. Those numbers are getting larger. 
Anytime you have numbers going in the negative direction, those numbers are getting smaller. Now notice, I didn't say in the right direction or in the, rec in the, or in the left direction. I said in the positive direction and the negative direction. That's because ultimately, uh, that's because ultimately, we, it, it, it doesn't matter which direction you have this in. Um, if we wanted, we could even make a number line where we spin this around and we have our positives over here and our negatives over here. And then this would be, the, the numbers going in this direction would be getting greater. The numbers going in this direction would be getting smaller. So I purposely don't say right and left. I say in a positive direction and a negative direction. All right? Um, this will be important as we go. We start getting into two-dimensional and three-dimensional number lines, which, uh, or as they call them, Cartesian coordinate planes. And, you know, we'll get into that soon while we're still studying the arithmetic. We don't have to jump into algebra yet, but it is very important that we, we know about this stuff. So, um, so the greater something is, the more along the positive direction it'll be, the uh, smaller something is, or the less something is, the more in the negative direction uh, something will be. Um, and that's a life jewel if you, you know, a kid to... Uh, here to uh, apply this outside of mathematics. But nevertheless, if I have a number like, we'll set up some numbers. So I'll say one is what to seven. We'll say three is what to negative three. We'll say zero is what to nine. We'll say negative two is what to zero. And then we'll say four is what to say negative 10. Okay, now some of these, and again, we're dealing with greater than, less than, or equal to. And you know, of course we do have greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and you know, pretty, pretty much we'll always be able to, anything we can find, these to be true for, we'll always be able to like insert one of the one of these, at least one of these. Um, but right now, right now we're just looking for which one of these could and could make these expressions true. So comparing one to seven, we have one right here and we have seven right here. Seven is further along the positive direction. I mean, seven is greater than one. If you think about it, count one finger. And then count seven. Five, six, seven. All right? My erase is falling on my hand. But, you know, you have seven here. This is, this is, you have a lot more fingers up than when you just have this one up. And so, we know that seven is greater than one, or one is less than seven. One is less than seven. And again, you could, could always invert it and say seven is greater than one. These, this is the same thing. This is the same statement. However, if you're a student and you're getting a test or a problem from a teacher, it is best that you just leave it in the, in the direction that, the, that it was written. Save, save you and the teacher some confusion. You know, you might fully understand it, and because of how you did it, they might think you don't understand it, even though you are overstanding it. So, that's one and seven. What about three and negative three? Well, we have three, negative three over here, and we have positive three over here. 
Well, negative three compared to three is, is, is more in a negative direction. That means negative three is less than three. Or three is in a positive is, is in more in a positive direction from the negative three. That means three is, is greater than negative three, alright? So we would say this. Alright, what about zero and nine? Zero's here. Nine is here. Nine, you have to go more in a positive direction to get to nine. That means nine is greater. That means zero is less than nine. All right? Now, what about negative two and zero? Well, negative two is right here. Zero is right here. So negative two is more in the negative direction than the zero. That means you have to go, that means negative two is less than the zero. And four and negative 10. Now you already know positive numbers are greater than negative numbers. So this should be a no brainer, but again, we have the number line just in case we, it's not a no brainer, just because we, just in case we need our brain to solve the problem. Well, we know that four is here. Negative 10 is all the way over here. Negative 10 is more in a negative direction than the four. Number four, the, the number four is more in a positive direction than the negative 10. So that means number four is greater than negative 10. Okay? Now, we're gonna compare some more things. Now we're gonna deal with negatives and that's the main reason I brought this number line into place because sometimes when you're dealing with negative numbers it can be confusing. The more, the, the because when we're dealing with positive numbers, it's pretty understood. The larger a number is, the bigger a number is, the, then that means that that number is greater, becoming greater. However, with the negative numbers, it can seem like, well, the larger a number is, the, the less it is, the smaller it is. And sometimes that it, it takes a minute for you to wrap your head around it. But this number line always comes to the rescue and putting things in perspective. So I wanna compare negative six and negative nine. We'll compare negative five to positive five, we'll compare zero or we'll compare six and zero or we'll compare zero and negative three Then we'll compare nine and negative nine, okay? Let's make it an eight. Eight ain't even getting, ain't even getting too much love. So we'll use eight. Comparing eight and negative eight, right? So, We have negative six, which is here. Negative nine, which is here. Negative nine is more in what direction compared to negative six? It is, in, it is more in the negative direction. That makes ne negative nine smaller than negative six. That makes negative six greater than, larger than negative nine. So, negative six is greater than negative nine. What about negative five and positive five, or negative five and regular five? <laughs> you got five over here, and then you have negative five over here. Well, we know that positive numbers are greater than negative numbers in general, um, because this happens as it relates to zero. Any number that's, that's positive is greater than zero, any number uh, that's negative is less than zero. So therefore, any number that's greater than zero on the, on the positive side is gonna be greater than the numbers that are less than zero. So we say this to say positive five is greater than negative five, or 
negative five is less than positive five. What about comparing six and zero? Well, any positive number is gonna be greater than zero, so we know six is greater than zero. Now what about zero and negative three? Zero is here, negative three is here. Negative three, well any negative number is going to be less than zero. So we know that negative three is less than zero, or with zero being on the right of negative three, if anything on the right being larger, or anything on the, in the positive direction being larger, um, anything more in the positive direction than the number you're, you're coming from is larger, that means it's greater. So zero is greater than negative three. And now finally, let's compare eight and negative eight. Well, this is a positive number, this is a negative number. So we know that the positive number is going to be greater than the negative number. It doesn't matter that they're the same. Um, that they have the same, they're dealing with the same number. One is positive and one is negative. And negative eight you have here, positive eight you have here. And as you can see, negative eight is way more in the negative than the regular eight. So negative eight is less than eight, or eight is greater than negative eight. So just a very basic overview of inequalities. Um, I hope this was to your understanding and I hope this benefits you. Uh, I hope this actually uh, provided uh, some insight that will now be used as we go on to the next uh, video of like division. Um, but you'll see it pop up in a lot of uh, parts of mathematics. So hope this helped. Peace and love. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can get our tutorials as they are uploaded onto YouTube. And definitely, if you need help in one-on-one um, -on -one tutoring, definitely check out thegraduationparty.org to get math tutoring uh, from an expert like myself, uh, who's tutored for over 15 years. I have degrees in mathematics and uh, physics and other sciences, as well as other qualified tutors that may be on the app. Peace and love, y'all take care.